the goal of this video is going to be to show you how to import a 3D scan into Mesh Mixer, how to kind of orient it properly and get the scaling correct, and how to do some basic editing to make it look a little bit more realistic and to make it uh, printable. So the first thing we want to do is import in our 3D scan. So I'm going to go up to File and go down to Import. I'm going to replace whatever is loaded into Mesh Mixer and open up my raw scan. I have my raw scan. I can look at it. I can see there's going to be some things that I need to adjust. I have some webbing of these fingers, uh, and I'm going to need to fix that. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have everything scaled correctly. So we're going to do that by going to Analysis over on the left-hand side, and I click on Analysis, and I'm going to go to Units slash Dimensions. And I want to get the units correct. This hand isn't actually 0.12 millimeters. It's a scan of an actual prosthetic that turns out to be about 121 millimeters. So I'm going to change that number to 121, hit enter, and that'll give me my appropriate scale. And I can go ahead and click done there. Then I want to orient this so that the part that's currently horizontal, I want that to actually be vertical up and down. So I'm going to go to edit, I'm going to go to transform, and I can use all these little arrows and these little quarter circles to kind of rotate and move things around so that I can get it into a orientation that I'm happy with. So I can move it up and down with this little green arrow. I can move it side to side. I can move it back and forth with the red arrow. What I really want to do is rotate it. So I'm going to take this red circle, and as I click on that, I can rotate this around and get it facing straight up and down. I can hold down the right mouse button and I can kind of orbit around my uh, file, and I can get a kind of good view of how this is going to be set up. So that looks good for uh, vertical orientation. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And I want to take this whole hand file, and I want to move it over here to this portion that, of Mesh Mixer that actually represents my printer. So I'm going to go to Edit again, and I'm going to click on Align. And that's just going to move it to the middle of the printer that I have loaded into Mesh Mixer at the time. So I'm going to click Accept. And now I have loaded up, and I can see how this is going to orient itself on my PrinterBot metal symbol. So this particular file will be a little bit too large to print on that PrinterBot, uh, but that's okay. We can keep uh, editing uh, as we need. So what I want to do next is I want to actually try to start cleaning and fixing up this file. First thing we want to do with our 3D scan is close any cracks. So we can just click on close cracks, and if there were any cracks in this scan, it would repair them for us. Then we want to take this uh, file and we want to make it a complete solid. You can do the fast option, and you can see it's a little bit blocky. So I want to kind of get rid of that blockiness because that'll show up in your print. So I'm going to go to accurate, and I'm going to change my solid accuracy up to about 512. And I'm going to go ahead and update. So when we update that, it's going to do calculations to kind of figure out uh, how to remesh and refill this in uh, to give you uh, a slightly higher accuracy here in its um, interpolations for, for creating this new mesh. So we can see this new mesh is a bit smoother. Uh, some of the part portions were smoothed out. We still have some blockiness, which we're going to get rid of um, uh, by hand, doing some manual adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept this. And this looks like a uh, fine scan of a hand, and I could 3D print this, uh, no problems. But what I want to do now is I kind of want to up the realism. I want to get rid of some of this webbing that's inside of these fingers and maybe add some details in here. And the first, first thing that I want to do with that is I want to kind of get rid of like I said, this webbing. So I can see this webbing between my index finger and, and my kind of middle finger. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to start doing some editing of this. I'm going to go to the select option, and that kind of gives me a little arrow and a little brush that I can work with. So I have my brush set to about 20. Uh, by default, the brush is set to be a bit higher, but I suggest uh, you can change this number. To, to about 20, and that seems to work quite well for, for this portion of, of what we're going to do. And what we want to do is we want to highlight any area that is uh, represented of this webbing, 
that's the webbing that we really don't want between our fingers. So I can click and I'm going to highlight all the area in orange where I think there's webbing that shouldn't be there if I were to print this out. If this were an actual hand, it would not actually be webbed. So I want to get rid of that webbing. So I highlight it on the back hand or the front of the hand, however you want to think of it. And then I'm going to scroll around to the other side of the hand and make sure that I get all of the webbing. The webbing from a uh, top view and the webbing from the from the view of the back of the hand. I'm going to highlight all this. There's no uh, set way to do this. There's no real definitive way to choose. Uh, do I want this part of the uh, hand included or not? It's just kind of uh, your best guess to get rid of as much of the webbing as, as you want. Okay, so I've got a nice little streak that I've highlighted all of the parts of the hand that look like there's webbing that shouldn't have it. So to get rid of this webbing, I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to go to Discard. And that just got rid of all the webbing, webbing for us. But what I need to do now is I need to refill in these holes in the hand. And I kind of, I really do want to attach the, this palm part to the, to the back of the hand. So I need to bridge this area. And I can do that again with the select command. And for the bridging, I want to kind of rotate around and select kind of, kind of, kind of a little U shape on both sides of the hand that I want to join together. So I'm thinking about these as though they're two sides of one bridge, and that bridge is going to kind of pass over that hole that I just created. So I highlighted both sides. So I have the two ends of my bridges. I'm going to go up to Edit and go down to Bridge. Click there, and that's going to give me a nice bridge that connects the front and the back of the hand again. What I have now are these two little holes still. Notice that these holes are separated from each other. So I can now close those holes up and let Mesh Mixer do it for me. So I go to Analyze, Analysis, I go to Inspector, and that's going to show me two little holes that I can actually repair. And I'm just going to click to Auto Repair All, and Mesh Mixer will do that for me. So I have repaired those two holes. But now I have fingers that look a little bit unnatural, right? They kind of have this blocky appearance and these sharp edges, which we don't want. I can fix those with the Sculpt command. So I go to Sculpt, I'm going to go to Brushes, and I'm going to go down to Robust Smooth. And click on that. I'm going to keep Strength at about 65, Size at about 20. That seems to work well for me. And I'm going to zoom in nice and close. I'm zooming in with the scroll wheel on my mouse. And anywhere where there's a craggy kind of straight edge, straight edge I'm just going to kind of scroll over that, hold the mouse button down, and it's going to smooth that out for me and give my fingers a much more natural look. So I'm getting rid of any blockiness that there is inside of my model. I zoom around to both sides of the finger so that I get rid of the blockiness on both sides. We don't want a huge smoothing factor that would just uh, make things very unnatural looking. Uh, and we're going for, for kind of a smooth, um, smooth kind of look, very organic. And then what I want to do is kind of raise up um, maybe some of this uh, webbing between the fingers. Maybe just click your mouse button down and you can see that it's going to smooth itself out. It's going to create a nice smoothing, and I get a nice little channel, and get a nice realistic looking um, attachment point between these fingers. All right, but I get rid of that whole webbed kind of look. And I guess I get a nice kind of organic looking uh, finger. So I'm doing sculpting uh, to make these uh, hands kind of look a little bit better, make a make them look a little more realistic. So I've done that sculpting, and I'm going to pause here for a second, and I'm going to go and follow the same exact process to get rid of the webbing of the other two fingers, and then we'll come back and show you how to add some detail. 
So when you're ready to add the detail in, we're going to do that with our brushes as well. So let's go to, over to your brushes, click on your brushes, and instead of doing the robust smooth uh, brush, the previous ones we've used, we're going to go to this pinch. Uh, your defaults are a little bit off. We want to kind of change these a little bit. I want to change my strength. I want to go up to 100. I'm going crazy. I want to keep my size at about 20. I want my depth. I want that all the way up to the top. I want to keep my laziness, I want to put my laziness at about 20. And then this volumetric option, I want to turn that off. And now what I can do with this pinch brush is I can actually make some features inside of this. All the creases that you have in your finger, we can kind of see them in here. I actually want to actually put them in. I want to kind of sculpt them in there so that they're permanent features. So I can do that by clicking and holding down my butt, mouse button and kind of dragging across. Clicking where I want it to start and drag across to where I want it to end. And I want it down there at the bottom of my finger too. And you'll notice that your creases aren't going to be perfect. You don't want perfect lines. If you look at the creases on your own fingers, they're not perfect. They're not perfectly straight. So you're kind of getting a nice organic kind of look by doing this sculpting procedure. Instead of modeling this in a traditional CAD program, something like, like Fusion 360, uh, by doing it in a mesh mixer, you can get more of a kind of natural kind of look. Uh, it does bring a little bit of artistry into this process. So there's no set correct way to do this. I'm just kind of going by eye to get nice looking fingers and nice creases in my fingers. Just kind of guessing at approximate locations for, for where these creases are going to be. I have a crease at the bottom of the thumb. And then we have creases on our palm. Kind of see where these are lightly in the scan. There's a crease right here. There's a crease that goes all the way from the top down to the bottom of our palm. If you're getting a kind of like dotted kind of look, that means you're just kind of dragging your line a little bit too quickly. You go a little bit slower and you can, you can kind of erase that kind of dot-like feature. And if I don't like the crease that I just drew, I can actually do Control and Z and that will delete the previous crease. Um, that will delete whatever the previous thing that you modeled in was. So I can fix that and get a nice better crease across my palm. Kind of fiddle with it till I like the look of it. Maybe I think I want another crease down in here. And then maybe I want a crease across the wrist. Kind of got nice creases uh, to make the hand look a little more natural. And then finally, uh, the last thing we can do is, is we can show you how to add in some fingernails. So let's look at the thumb. Let's zoom in nicely. And we're going to use the pinch feature again, the pinch sculpting. And I'm just going to sculpt in a fingernail here. I'm going to go by eye, approximately what a fingernail should look like. and Kind of draw a little rounded fingernail around most of the, of the finger and then I'm going to kind of close it off up here at the top. And I have a rough looking fingertip and then I can go around and I can change my brushes. I can change back to this robust smooth and kind of smooth out some of the rough edges of all of these fingers and do just general smoothing of the hand until I'm happy with the appearance. And at the very end, you should have a relatively realistic looking um, design. And we could use this as a terminal device, or we could use this as a uh, hollowed out cosmetic prosthetic. And we'll show you how to do those in a separate video.